starts the recording. So let me announce the next speaker is Alexander Grigorian, who will speak under the title Analysis on Ultrametric Spaces and Heat Kernels. Please. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I'm very grateful to the organizers for the invitation to attend this uh, very interesting meeting. Uh, so um, the title was already announced. It combines two topics that may exist also independently, ultrametric spaces and heat kernels. And let me start with the classical notion of the heat kernel, just as a reminder. Um, what is the heat kernel in RN? Um, consider the heat equation in RN, uh, du by dt is delta u, where delta is the classical Laplace operator. Then it has a fundamental solution that is taught in any course, initial course of PDEs, uh, the function PTXY, function of positive time and XY points in Rn, that is the gauss weierstrass function, also called 1 over 4 pi t to the power n over 2 times Gaussian exponential here. At the same time, this, fu this function has many uh, functions in mathematics. It's uh, not only a fundamental solution of the heat equation, that is called heat kernel, therefore, and it also uh, equals to the transition density of Brownian motion in RA. That transition density is, uh, means that probability of getting from initial point X to some uh, subset A of RN is obtained by integrating the heat kernel with respect to Y. Uh, what is important for us also to observe is that the minus Laplace operator, that so-called positive definite Laplacian, uh, can be, is initially defined, of course, as differential operator, but then it can be extended to a self-adjoint uh, non-negative definite operator in L2 with the back measure, uh, which allowed then by means of functional calculus to define the operator e to the t delta, where t is non-negative. So we become, uh, we obtain in this way, a family of bounded operators that is called the heat semigroup. Uh, and this operator for any positive t is in fact the integral operator and the kernel of this operator is exactly uh, this, the same heat kernel, right? That's another uh, meaning of the heat kernel as the integral kernel of uh, this uh, semigroup, of the sem heat semigroup. But for us, it's, uh, we will need more powers of Laplace operator. Since uh, Laplace operator is minus Laplace and is positive definite, one can consider arbitrary powers of this operator. In, in, again, in sense of functional calculus, uh, we fix some uh, value beta called index between zero and two and consider minus Laplace to the power beta over two. Then it's also self-adjoint on negative definite operator in L2. And it also defines the heat semigroup that is now written in, in this form, e to the minus t uh, of minus delta to beta over two. Um, um, and this semigroup has also non-negative integral kernel that is denoted here with pt uh, beta in brackets uh, of x and t and x and y. And um, this uh, heat kernel, this function, integral kernel, also deserves the name of heat kernel because it's also the integral kernel of another heat semigroup. And it coincides with the transition density of symmetric stable Levy process in Rn of index beta. This is jump process in Rn, and its uh, transition density is exactly this function. Uh, what is known about this function, pt beta, heat kernel of the Laplacian to the power beta over two. Uh, in the case when beta equals to one, uh, there is explicit formula. This is this formula. This is nothing else uh, but Cauchy distribution with the parameter t. Um, for arbitrary beta between zero and two, there is no explicit formula, but there is a good estimate. Uh, 
from above and below as follows. Um, the uh, hip kernel of uh, Laplace to power beta over two, PT beta, uh, has upper and lower bound through the following function that is written here, which is very much looks like a Cauchy distribution, but with change powers, right? Or equivalently, I will write it up as in here in the right hand side, which explains, uh, which makes resemblance to the uh, Gaussian function. It also contains so-called on diagonal term. That is the value of the heat kernel when X equals to Y. Yeah, this is uh, one over T to the power N over beta. In the Gaussian case, it was N over two. And of diagonal term that gives decay in distance uh, between X and Y. In the Gaussian case, that is a uh, quadratic exponential decay. In this Levy case, this is some power decay. And the power is this one, minus N plus beta. And also uh, this formula shows what is the scaling, proper scaling between distance and time. It's given by this ratio, right? In Gaussian case, this is distance divided by square root of T. So that is, uh, yeah, and this sign that appears here, this I call it as comparable, means that the ratio of the left-hand side and right-hand side is bounded from above and below by positive constants. So up to, up to constants, uh, we have this um, estimate. Uh, this is the formula identity two and estimate three are easy consequences of the Gaussian heat kernel uh, and obtained from that by using so-called subordination technique. Right, okay, now we come to general situation. This is what I just told is um, partly reminder, partly some maybe new information about what happens in RN. But our purpose is more general spaces like metric spaces, actual alter metric spaces, but I start with general metric space. Um, so we let MD be a locally compact separable metric space. This will be the main underlying space. And mu, uh, well, we need to fix uh, Radon measure on uh, uh, the space mu with full support. Uh, then, um, we will be speaking about construction of jump processes analogous to the process Levy processes in RN. And there is convenient uh, way of constructing such processes by means of the theory of Dirichlet forms, which is presented in the book of Fukushima called also Dirichlet forms. Uh, well, I don't take that everybody knows this theory, but uh, very briefly I will describe uh, this. So uh, first of all, one needs to define in L2 uh, a quadratic form or a bilinear form. That's a quadratic form or symmetric bilinear form. And uh, I restrict myself here to so-called jump time directly form and they all have the following shape. This is the double integral of M times M with respect to product measure of Fx minus Fy squared times and this is what one needs to choose, so-called jump kernel that will be denoted by Jxy, which is uh, a non-negative symmetric function on the product. Right? Um, first, um, of course, it's not clear what is domain of this quadratic form. Basically, it should be the set of L2 functions everywhere this form is finite, but then one may need to somewhat restrict this domain uh, to choose a proper domain that will be denoted by uh, script F as a dense subset of L2, uh, such that uh, this form E on this domain is finite. And also uh, it contains in some sense, a lot of continuous functions. I will not explain in details, but if one can do this, that is define this uh, quadratic form with a proper domain, then one obtains a so-called regular directly form. That is what one needs. And then the theory of Fukushima tells us as soon as one has a re regular directly form, then it's diff uh, it has uh, also generator and also it um, induces a corresponding Markov jump process 
with uh, this generator. Right? But for us, it's at, at, at this moment sufficient to speak uh, just of this directly form. And the generator uh, will be um, integral operator L uh, that has uh, this shape. This will be difference of maybe integral difference operator, right? Difference Fy minus Fx times the same gem kernel integrate with respect to Y. Well, domain of this operator has to be specified, of course, uh, which I won't do. Uh, and this is um, uh, non-negative, uh, non-positive definite self-adjoint operator. It comes as a generator of the directly form. And the next step in this um, theory is the heat semigroup e to the power t l, the same way as we defined above e to the power t delta. And if this this is heat semigroup, and this if this semigroup uh, has an integral kernel. That is, if it acts on function f through the integration with some function ptxy, then this function ptxy is called the heat kernel, right? So we use here in general theory uh, the definition of the heat kernel as the integral density of the heat semigroup or integral kernel of the heat semigroup. In this way, of course, it does is not always exist, but uh, if it exists, then uh, we are speaking about uh, uh, the heat kernel. And in this case, the Markov process that is generated by this theory uh, has the transition density PTXY also. Um, so as an example, uh, consider in Rn, come back to Rn. Uh, and consider the same quadratic form, that is general quadratic form has number four here, uh, with the jump kernel that is distance between x, y to some negative power, minus n plus beta, where beta is, is going to be between zero and two as above the index. Then this quadratic form has this shape, right? And uh, probably this formula is familiar to many people. And uh, this quadratic form extends to a regular directly form. And generator of this form is exactly uh, the operator that we have seen before, this Laplacian to power beta. Although I have forgotten here, there must be some constant in front of this that depends on n and beta, but it doesn't matter. Um, so this is uh, how this general theory works in RN, right? Uh, the question that I'm going to discuss here, uh, coming back to a general metric measure space, MD mu, and a rather general jump kernel, J, for which we can construct uh, the Dirichlet uh, form. We can ask whether this Dirichlet form has a heat kernel, uh, whether the heat kernel of the associated Dirichlet form exists and satisfies the following estimate. So our purpose is uh, to see if the heat kernel satisfied the estimate that had the same shape as before on diagonal behavior in time as t to some power, alpha and beta are some so far unknown positive parameters. Right? And off diagonal term is also the same shape as before. It contains ratio of distance with t to some power and also with some negative power. Uh, of course, one may ask why this question. Of course, this shape of the heat kernel estimate is the same as the shape of the heat kernel of um, symmetric stable Levy process, right? The same, the same shape, in the, only in steps, instead of n, which was dimension of the space, I write unknown parameter alpha. But uh, this is motivated also, not only by this analogy, but also by the following theorem that we proved with Takashi Kumagai some time ago. Uh, assume that the heat kernel in this generality uh, satisfies certain estimate of the shape, of similar shape, but with unknown function phi, which uh, governs off diagonal behavior, but still of self similar type in the sense that distance comes 
uh, with ratio, uh, with time and certain power, right? Then if it's so, then this function, for this function phi, there is only one possibility. It must be exactly this one, exactly number six, right? Uh, therefore, uh, the only way of jump process to have this uh, kind of self-similar estimate is to be of this shape, of shape uh, given by number six. So therefore it makes, in some sense, it's the best possible uh, situation, the best, the most homogeneous space when a heat kernel uh, satisfies uh, the stable-like estimate. I refer to this as stable-like estimate for obvious reasons. Right? Uh, so what is known? What is easy to do first? It's easy to do that uh, if if this estimate uh, is true, then it implies as consequences the following. With a necessary condition. First of all, so-called alpha regularity of the space of the underlying space. It means that every metric ball, uh, I didn't use, I didn't define metric ball. This will be as... Um, measure of points where distance is bounded by R. I will use closed balls in this talk. It will be more convenient. Right? So every metric ball must have a measure comparable to power, uh, to radius to power alpha. Alpha is the same parameter as it is used in this estimate. And jump kernel uh, must be of the order distance to the power minus alpha plus beta. So there are quite rigid consequences of the heat kernel bounds. The space must be alpha regular and jump kernel must be of more or less uh, unique uh, shape up to constant multiples. Right? But in general, yeah, I denote this uh, condition by V. V is volume condition, right? And this condition by J, obviously J stands for jump kernel. Uh, so these are necessary condition for stable like heat kernel estimate. But in generally, these two are not enough for stable like condition. In for general metric measure spaces, one needs one more condition, which is quite complicated one. I call it a generalized capacity condition. This was actually down in the paper cited here. Uh, but in the point of my talk is that in the case when M is ultrametric space, then the situation is actually much better. Right? In this case, uh, one can sort out this problem without this additional difficult condition. So uh, quick reminder about ultrametric spaces that were already mentioned at this conference. Uh, metric D is called ultrametric when uh, it satisfies stronger than triangle inequality, strong inequality, the distance between X, Y is bounded not only by the sum, but also by maximum of distances X, Z and Z, Y. Uh, this innocently looking uh, stronger version of triangle inequality that is called ultrametric inequality implies quite unusual uh, properties of balls. Now look back at the metric balls that I have just defined. Uh, ultrametric property implies the following unusual property of balls. Any two metric balls of the same radius are either disjoint or identical. In other words, Typical for Euclidean space situation when two balls of the same radius simply overlap a little bit, this is not possible in ultrametric spaces. They either the same or disjoint or completely disjoint. It's more like a partition of uh, space. Uh, yeah, it follows, it implies that the whole space is, is disjoint union of a family of the balls of the same radius. If we fix radius, then it implies that, right? So it's a, both uh, give us partition of the space into uh, balls of the same radius. 
Another consequence of ultrametric inequality is that every point inside the ball is its center with the same radius. Uh, so every ball has then uh, a lot of centers, all of them being uh, points inside the ball, right? And as a consequence, all balls that are defined as closed sets are also open sets. Uh, R must be positive, of course, in this case. And, um, and, as, uh, and it itself implies that the space M is totally disconnected. There are no connected sets except for points. Um, as a further consequence of that is that ultrametric space cannot carry a non-trivial diffusion process because diffusion process has continuous paths, which cannot exist unless they are frozen. Um, so, uh, yeah, these are a lot of uh, untri non-trivial uh, consequences of ultrametric property. And turns out that for the question that we're going to discuss, they are actually beneficial. Right. Uh, so, but first example, of course, the main example of ultrametric space is the space of periodic numbers, QP. Uh, with the ultrametric uh, that is given by periodic norm, x minus y periodic norm. Uh, and we also, as a basic example, will consider the space QP to, to the power n, that is analogous of Rn in periodic analysis, where n is positive integer. Uh, and periodic norm in this space, that is for sequences of periodic numbers, is defined as maximum of their of periodic norms of uh, the components. So it becomes also periodic and the ultrametric distance, uh, the, the distance uh, that is defined as P norm of X minus Y in this space is also ultrametric. We, are, we also need the measure always, right? And as measure, we choose in this space hard measure, right? It always exists on such, this is a group. Uh, with normalizing condition that measure of every ball of radius one is one. This implies by simple properties of balls in such spaces that measure of every ball having radius p to the power m, where m is arbitrary integer positive or negative, is exactly p to the n m. It's consequence of the fact that in dimension one, that is in qp, ball of radius uh, P to the M can be split into P balls of radius, each of them P M minus one, right? That's disjoint union. And so by multiplying by P one gets that. It is in one dimensional and in N dimensional it will be uh, like this, uh, will be not P, but P to the N balls. So in particular, uh, but uh, if radius is between two powers of P between two integer powers of P, then BR of X coincides with B to the power uh, B of radius P to the M. And the measure of this ball is back, to, is equal back to P to the N M, the same as here, which is in this case in finite ratio to R to the M. So like in Euclidean N dimensional space, in n-dimensional periodic space, measure of balls of radius r is of the order r to the power n. Um, for, on this space, one can have also kind of non-local operator, integral operator, but uh, this is an attempt to introduce differential calculus in periodic spaces. Uh, and the first, uh, at least uh, first one that is uh, used in this paper, in, uh, historically, the first one was done by Tableson in 1975. He introduced certain operator by using Fourier transform in QPN. Fourier transform uh, for uh, complex valued functions on QPN is again complex valued function on the same space. It's self dual. Uh, uh, that is given by similar formula as in. Rn, mu is here hard measure as we described above. And here uh, only one need to mention that pairing X and Xi um, 
is not in a product as it's the, uh, used in RN, but it's given by this formula. Uh, this contains products of components XK and XIK that are periodic numbers and their product is also periodic number. But then one takes fractional part of periodic number and hence obtain a rational number. Therefore, this quantity has rational value and therefore exponential is understood in the usual sense. So this is a, a Fourier transform. Um, I won't specify domain and so on. And then by means of Fourier transform define operator, I denote it by T to beta, but uh, in previous talk by Sasha Bindikov, he used notation D to the beta, right? This table sum operator that is uh, defined by its Fourier transform so that it, in Fourier transform, it is multiplier uh, with uh, P norm of psi to the power beta which is complete analogous of the operator minus delta to the power beta over two in Rn, whose Fourier transform in Rn has the same shape with respect to Euclidean norm, of course. Uh, this operator is self-adjoint, non-negative definite. Um, and also maybe worth mentioning that using uh, this beta as a superscript is justified by the fact that this is T1 to the power beta. This is non-negative definite operator. We can raise it to any positive power. Um, okay. But now I would like to introduce another point of view on such operators. In fact, um, for us, main um, one of the direction for me is construction of directly forms on uh, ultrametric spaces also which leads to construction of generators, that is certain non-local operators on such spaces. And uh, I do first step here in the next section, so-called isotropic directly forms. This is some technique for constructing on arbitrary ultrametric space, where we assume that all balls are compact, uh, and we assume the presence of some Radon measure with full support. Uh, so we are going to construct on such a space a reasonable directly form. Now for that, we need to choose one more input parameter that will be, uh, that is denoted here by sigma. This is just a function on positive reals, which is cumulative probability distribution function, or simply to say, just a function, uh, strictly monotone increasing function taking value between zero and one. And that converges to one. This one example of such a function shown on this uh, uh, picture. And given uh, all these um, objects, ultrametric space was measure and cumulative distribution function, we define, now define by this identity, the jump curl. This is integral from distance x, y to infinity, integration with respect to variable r, which is radius of the ball, in denominator measure of the ball of radius r centered at point x, and one integrate this function as, as Riemann in riemann stiltjes integration with respect to log of sigma of r, which is a monotone increasing function. Uh, <clears throat> so why this jump curl? Turns out that this is really very good choice, right? uh, the which is justified in the following theorem. Um, so first of all, this jump kernel always determines a regular directly form in L2. And the, the, its heat kernel can be obtained by the following explicit, a very simple formula. That is most interesting about this jump kernel that it allows to compute explicitly and simply the heat kernel. It has, this integral has the same shape as integral for the jump kernel. The only difference is that we choose the, um, in Riemann still TS function, not log of sigma, but sigma to the power t, where t is positive time. Yeah, here t is, it doesn't say t, of course, is positive time. 
uh, and this sigma to the power t, this sigma t means. So, um, yeah, and we refer to this Dirichlet form. Uh, Dirichlet form is not written explicitly, but Dirichlet form with this jump kernel as isotropic Dirichlet form. Why so? Why one has uh, this uh, terminology is explained um, in the following uh, paragraph. Um, of course, as soon as we have Dirichlet form, then uh, we also have a Markov process, jump process, that is denoted by xt here. And it turns out that this jump process behaves as follows. It jumps from x0 and so on and so on. As soon as we are at some position xt at time t, it waits some exponential time, and then jumps uh, to the next position as follows. It uniformly distributes in ball of radius R centered at xt. This ball is shaded on this picture, where radius R is random. It's randomly chosen by choosing exactly this function sigma, probability distribution sigma. Right? So the function sigma gives us the rule how one chooses a radius. Uh, so, um, now, I, uh, yeah, and that's isotropic. The word isotropic refers to the fact that uh, one, uh, the all directions inside the ball are in fact uniform with respect to this uh, procedure. So um, now why ultrametric property is uh, important here for, for this theory? Of course, for general spaces, there is no chance for such a result. I briefly explained advantages of ultrametric uh, property here. For that, uh, we use averaging operators. Uh, look at operator QR, R, let us fix some positive R. And uh, this is just averaging operator where we integrate function F over ball of radius R with this variable center X and then obtain new function QR. Rf, right. this integral operator uh, of this type. Of course, this operator is possible to define on every metric space, right? But on ultra metric space, it has the following properties. Uh, it is bounded in L2, of course, it's general property, right? But then it's self adjoint, it's some weak use of ultra metric. But serious use of ultra metric is this identity that composition of QR and QS is actually also averaging operator with, uh, with uh, parameter maximum of R and S. So shortly to say, composition of two averaging operator is again averaging operator. And in particular, uh, when R equals to S, we get QR squared is QR. And what does it mean? QR is self-adjoint operator, and if its square is the same as this operator, is it impotent, then Q is orthoprojector. This well-known characterization of orthoprojector projector on orthogonal projector on a closed subspace in L2. Um, that is actually critical for this theory, and this property holds only in ultrametric spaces. Um, why? This is true, right? Maybe I'll briefly explain um, this identity, right? Why this is true. Indeed, uh, if we take any ball of any arbitrary ball of radius R, then any point inside this ball, any point X that we choose inside the ball is center. Therefore, uh, when we apply this formula for this ball uh, with this X, this integration will not depend on x. By moving x inside the ball, we don't change the ball, right? Therefore, uh, the value of QRF will be constant on this ball. It does not depend on x inside the ball. That is, QRF is constant on any ball of radius R. And therefore, if we apply QR again, we can we'll get back the same constant. Therefore, this is where this identity 
difficult, right? Or a little bit more extended version of this argument is shown here. I skip this, uh, y for s larger than r or s smaller than r, we'll get this, uh, well, uh, we'll get this identity. Um, and uh, why, how we use this property? As we see, indeed, uh, ultrametric property uh, is used, ultrametric property is used seriously to prove uh, identity 12. And this identity is used uh, to prove the following. Now let us consider a uh, further uh, combination of all these averaging operators by using uh, sigma to the power t, by using sigma to the power t as measure. Uh, this convex combination of QR with uh, where T is positive. And this is a new operator that is denoted by PT. It turns out that this identities 12 allow to prove that this is actually a semi-group. This direct consequence of this identities, right? And then uh, we also prove uh, that uh, um, it coincides we compute jump kernel uh, that comes from this semi-group, right? And show that also the generator of this semi-group and show that this generator coincides with the generator of the directly form described above. Or in other words, the jump kernel that comes from this semi-group is the same as the uh, jump kernel is given in this formula, right? Um, Oops, uh, which implies that uh, this semi-group is the same as the heat semi-group of the isotropic directly form. But after that, everything is simple. Since we have explicit formula for the heat semi-group, it gives immediately explicit formula for the heat kernel, right? Because heat kernel is integral operator of this semi-group. Another consequence of that is that if we integrate this by parts, we get something like integral with respect to DQR. And QR is family of orthoprojectors. And in fact, it gives us immediately spectral decomposition of operator PT in the sense of spectral theory. And if so, then one can convert it into spectral, to the spectral decomposition of the generator L and thus obtain full information about this operator, in particular its spectrum. As a matter of fact, these uh, results about spectrum of this operator were presented in the talk of Sasha Bendikov, uh, which unfortunately had to be interrupted due to connection problems. But he actually approached, uh, uh, considered the same operator in his talk and uh, gave the sequence of, full sequence uh, of eigenfunctions and described all eigenvalues, right? And in particular, all this information can be obtained also from this point of view. Um, right, okay. One more remark before we finish this topic that uh, averaging operator QR, of course, one can consider also in RN. Uh, in RN, it's also bounded and self adjoint, but in RN, it's not orthoprojector. Uh, in particular, in RN, one can actually easily compute. Uh, its spectrum is not non-negative. The spectrum of averaging operator in RN has negative parts, so it cannot be orthoproject. Um, all right, so I hope I convince you that uh, analysis on ultrametric spaces has certain advantages, even in comparison with classical analysis in RN. So uh, now let us come back to uh, n-dimensional periodic space, QPN, equipped with the same ultrametric as I described above, uh, and with the same higher measure mu as above, right? And then in order to construct isotropic directly form on this space, we need uh, to choose distribution function. And in this case, we choose a, a bit very tricky a distribution function sigma as follows, exponential of minus p over r to the power beta. Beta is uh, just fixed positive number. Uh, this distribution has a naming probability theory. It's called Fréchet distribution, although it's not 
very frequently used, but nevertheless, it has even its own name. But as a matter of fact, the picture of distribution that I showed you above, ah, uh, this here is exactly this function. Is exactly this one is exactly Frechet distribution. So it looks like this. Oh, no, it's too far. Oh, I jumped over. Right. Okay. Then uh, now what we do? We just take this and substitute into the formula for the jump kernel. This is formula two, number 10 is formula for the jump kernel. To compute a jump kernel here, we need to know sigma function and we need to know measure of balls, right? And in uh, n-dimensional uh, periodic space, formula for the measure of balls is known exactly, I showed you above. And when sigma is also known exactly, then we just compute it. And the computation actually uh, gives us the jump kernel that is constant times distance between x, y to the power minus n plus beta. On the other hand, one can, com can compute jump kernel of the Tableson operator. Tableson operator was given uh, initially by Fourier transform. This formula is given here, but then if one makes inverse Fourier transform and computes carefully how it works, turns out that Tableson operator is also integral operator and its kernel is exactly this function. So therefore, by comparing these two results, we see that Tableson operator is nothing else as the generator of the isotropic Dirichlet form with this function sigma, as it's shown here. Uh, yeah, or coincide with T delta, T beta, right? Therefore, we can compute uh, uh, jump uh, hit kernel for the tables and operator by taking uh, the formula for the hit kernel. Again, the same we can do with the hit kernel. If we know measure of balls, if we know sigma, we can substitute here and compute. At least in this case, computation is not exact, but um, one gets the estimate from this inter, uh, identity. And this estimate is exactly gives us stable like estimate, where this parameter alpha that was alpha is now parameter n. Right? This, uh, so therefore, uh, we obtained in this way that Tableson operator generates Markov process with um, hit kernel that satisfies stable like estimate. It's exactly like um, symmetric stable Levy process in RN. Formula is actually the same as in RN, right? The only difference, but it's very essential difference, that here in altrimetric space in QPN, index beta can take arbitrary positive value. Whereas in RN, index is always restricted between zero and two. This is difference between these two spaces. But otherwise, the formula for the heat kernel look the same. And formula for the jump kernels are also look the same, up to constant. Right? So there are more than one can thought about similarity between RN and uh, QPN. Now let us look at a more general problem. Jump kernels or jump processes also on more general altrimetric spaces, on so-called alpha regular altrimetric spaces. Um, so, uh, we assume, first, we start with arbitrary altrimetric space with compact balls, and assume that it is so-called alpha regular, that it satisfies the condition V with some alpha, that its measure of every ball of radius R is of order R to the alpha up to constants for all x and all positive r. Also, let us fix jump kernel on M, such that this jump kernel is of order of distance between x and y to the power minus alpha plus beta. These are necessary conditions for the stable like heat kernel bounds, as I showed above. Right now, we make them as assumption. Um, 
Then uh, the corresponding Dirichlet form or pre-Dirichlet form, the quadratic form, uh, is not necessarily isotropic uh, because to make it isotropic, we need uh, to have much more precise uh, information here. To the, the jump kernel is not represented in the form that is needed for isotropic form. So uh, in order to obtain heat kernel in this situation, we need completely different methods. And these methods were developed in this very recent paper by joined with Sasha Bendikov, Arian Hu, and uh, Joshin Hu, just published uh, this year. And I state this, although without details of the proof, because they are quite involved. Right? So I assume that these two conditions are satisfied. The space is um, alpha regular, and the jump kernel is of this order. Then the quadratic form, I repeat here again, quadratic form that is determined by the jump kernel, always determines a regular Dirichlet form in L2. That is, with proper, properly chosen domain F, it becomes a regular Dirichlet form. Its heat kernel also exists, always exists, is continuous in Txy, hold the continuous in xy, so a very nice function, and satisfies finally the stable like estimate as I stated at the very beginning. This is of the diagonal term times of diagonal term, all in correct powers. Since I mentioned already above that V and J are necessary conditions for this estimate, we obtain actually equivalence. That if we have uh, the, the conjunction of the alpha regularity and the assumption about the jump kernel, this one is simply equivalent to the this estimate of the heat kernel. Again, the proof is very involved, uh, use multiple techniques um, and based on completely different ideas, but the uh, presence of alpha metric is also seriously used, although in different way than I showed above. Um, right, maybe I give one more example. Uh, the, all armed with this theory, we can consider further examples, look at the product spaces. Uh, for that, we consider a finite sequence of ultra metric spaces, M, I, D, I, mu, I, suppose n spaces of this, uh, such that every mi is alpha regular with parameter alpha i. And on each mi, we consider jump kernel, j i x y, which is distance on this uh, space, d i, to power minus alpha i plus beta, where we fix some index beta, which is independent of i. The same for all spaces. Then by theorem three that I just uh, have formulated, the heat kernel on each mi separately that I denoted by PTI exists and satisfy the stable like estimate where everywhere when appropriate one should put i, index i. Now we consider product space, direct product of m1 and so on mn with L infinity distance, which is also ultra metric, right? and with product measure, right? Very natural construction. Then the product space is again alpha regular, where this in, uh, exponent alpha is the sum of all alpha i's. And we consider on this space the operator L, we first consider a bit informally, as the sum of operate generators L1 and so on Ln, where Li is a generator in Mi, of the corresponding Dirichlet form acting on the coordinate xi. In other words, this is analogous of uh, standard construction in Rn when we define differential operator as the sum of differential operators acting on different coordinates, right? And here we get we uh, extend this uh, to uh, this situation, this idea to this situation. As a matter of fact. Uh, this operator L is generator of the Dirichlet form uh, of some di um, uh, Dirichlet form of jump type, but 
it has no jump kernel, but jump measure, right? In this case, one has to operate with more general directly forms and jump measure is the, actually the product of, consists of the product of jump measure in J in direction I with all other delta function and summation and all I. Just a For little the, time reminder, you read. Yeah, yeah, all right. Okay. Okay. Ah, okay, I have to, okay. Uh, all right, then one gets some, uh, for heat kernel, one gets the product of the corresponding heat kernel. And then um, it's easy, uh, just uh, give the example, concrete example of Vladimirov operator in QPN that is defined by using the same procedure as the sum of table sums operator in each direction of QPN separately. X, Xi is um, one of the n directions, right? And then in this case, we obtain by this procedure, the heat kernel of the Vladimirov operator V beta. This again was meant uh, to be a, an, an analogous of the Laplace operator. But in, in this case, uh, the heat kernel is not so homogeneous. It's uh, not, it doesn't depend directly of the distance, uh, on the distance between X and Y, but on individual distances on each coordinate. All right, so uh, yeah, maybe I take a couple of more minutes to uh, come to probably the most interesting part of the talk um, about notion of walk dimension. So we say that a metric measure space is regular if it admits alpha regular measure with some positive alpha, or which is equivalent to the fact that it's Hausdorff measure where alpha index alpha is here, Hausdorff dimension of M is alpha regular. In other words, Hausdorff measure uh, of every ball of radius R is of order R to the power alpha. That's secure. On any regular metric space, we consider the quadratic form E beta has the same with the same shape as I considered before, with jump kernel that is distance xy to the power minus alpha plus beta, uh, where measure mu here, we can take it to be just Hausdorff measure. So it's construction completely within the category of metric spaces, of regular metric spaces. Then define, so, so far it's quadratic form simply without any domain, but then we define the notion of walk dimension beta star uh, by the following formula. We look at all values of beta such that E beta extends to a regular directly form. Uh, it's written a little bit uh, short way that one can equip E beta with the domain so that it becomes a regular directly form in L2 and takes supremum of all such betas. Um, and then we denote this by beta star and call it walk dimension of the space. One can show that the walk dimension is always at least two. And the reason for that is because Lipschitz functions with compact uh, support are also always in the domain. And if we substitute here Lipschitz function, then everything works nicely uh, when uh, beta is smaller than two. So when one gets the dense domain quickly. Uh, what is known about this notion of what I mentioned? In Rn, it is exactly two minimal value. And this value too appears everywhere. So, uh, for example, in Gaussian estimate or in bound of um, index of Levy processes, number two appears everywhere. On ultrametric spaces, beta star is infinity. And this is consequence of our theorem that shows that uh, the corresponding directly form, this, uh, this quadratic form become directly form for arbitrary value of beta. So supremum is infinity. And what is interesting, there are many, many examples of fractal spaces where beta star is between these two end values, right? By fractal spaces, I mean something like Sierpinski gasket or Sierpinski carpet that are shown on this picture without going into details. Um, on many uh, examples of many families of fractals, it's known that there exists a so-called local directly form which induces diffusion processes in contrast to jump processes that we considered here in most part of this talk. And the heat kernel 
in this case satisfies more complicated sub-Gaussian estimate where of diagonal term is decaying exponential containing some ratio of distance and time. Right, and in all cases, this parameter gamma that appears in this estimate is actually equals to the work dimension beta star that was defined above. So beta star, that's the reason why beta star is called work dimension determines, determines scaling between distance and time in such a situation. Right, and finally, I will present some attempt to classify regular Direct, uh, regular metric spaces by means of the walk dimension. I consider walk dimension as a second after the Hausdorff dimension important invariant of regular metric space. A, re a regular metric space has, of course, first uh, important invariant, which is uh, Hausdorff dimension, which also determines volume of the balls in this space. But walk dimension tells us a bit more. Your walk dimension is actually independent uh, invariant of this. Moreover, any pair alpha and beta star uh, can be realized as a pair of Hausdorff dimension, walk dimension of some metric space, where alpha is anything positive and beta star is anything between two and infinity. And this was shown by Martin Barlow. This gave me a lot of examples. And now I show, I think, very interesting observation, um, how the known metric spaces are located on the axis beta star. All Euclidean, well, this axis must be between two and infinity, right, of course. Uh, all Euclidean spaces sit at the point beta equals to two. As I mentioned already, in Euclidean spaces, log dimension is equal to two. And that's the reason why in Euclidean analysis, nobody uh, noted this notion, right? On ultrametric spaces, this is infinity, right? This is another end of the scale. And between them sit all fractal spaces where walk dimensions between two and infinity. For example, on Sierpinski gasket, it's about 2.3. On Sierpinski cup, it is about 2.09 and so on and so on, so on. Quite a lot of Things. And all this uh, axis is filled with various spaces. So, and finally, maybe uh, one more observation here. Alpha as Hausdorff dimension is of course responsible for integration in this space because it determines Hausdorff measure. Parameter beta, beta star, is responsible for differentiation on those spaces in some sense because as soon as one has uh, local Dirichlet form on fractal spaces, say, uh, uh, which uh, has uh, sub Gaussian heat kernel estimate that is determined by beta star, it also has local uh, generator that can be regarded as natural Laplacian of those spaces. That is, we get local differentiation operator on such a spaces. And these operators are determined by this log dimension beta star. Right? And beta star determines also diffusion on those spaces. And finally, a couple of open questions. Uh, as I mentioned, on all other metric spaces, beta star is infinity. Is it true that the, the is converse is true? If beta star is infinity, then d, d is ultrametric. It's interesting to understand whether there is one to one correspondence here. Or, more difficult question. If beta star is finite, does it mean that there exists necessarily non-trivial local Dirichlet form, that is, existence of local differentiation operator or existence of diffusion on this space? All right, it will be interesting to be able to answer those questions. All right, thank you very much. Sorry for taking a bit more time than was expected. Thank you. Thank you very much for a very nice talk. Uh, so now we have a minute or so for questions and remarks. <laughs> um.